support the development, infrastructure, project management, all kinds of things, right? Um, but he's also known as the Agile Quaka. I think this is the most interesting thing. So <laughs> Jeff's reputation exceeds Australia's beloved happiest animals on the planet because Jeff guides others to joy, which is far more lasting than happiness. So I love that, Jeff. So welcome. I am going Thank to you. stop sharing and here we go. Great. Turn it over I, to you. I, I will begin sharing. So thank you, Jamie. Thank you, uh, everyone, Scrum Masters of the Universe team, for making this possible today. Uh, it's it's it was sad the other uh, evening when uh, Agile Austin uh, organizers let me know that uh, they had a a situation arise where they could not uh, help us out. So uh, or continue on with what we had planned, and then you all stepped up and. Uh, it was it was just amazing to see the outpouring of support and the the rapid response to uh, uh, to come in and and take care of this event and still make it happen for those that wanted to be here. So and thank you for everyone who made the time today. Uh, whether it's your for many of you here in the in the states, it might be right around your your middle of the day sort of meal break, perhaps or something close to it. Um, hopefully, you've got some food in your system. If if you're like me and you're just running on coffee, uh, it's this could make you a little bit hungry because we're talking about a taster or a sampler of the Scrum Mastery pathway. So I put this beautiful uh, charcuterie board of sorts and and other goodies there to uh, tantalize us. Uh, but hopefully yeah, you'll that find. Definitely yeah. makes me hungry. <laughs> you're like, stop it, Jeff. Why did you do that? Yeah. Uh, but we're gonna use Minty. Uh, let's see. I think I I got the link over to Jamie. She should be able to add it in the chat. Very shortly for you here. And uh, if you're not yet familiar with Minty, then we'll have a direct link that should pull you right in into the Minty. Uh, but you can also open up another, uh, and the link will look something like this you see here, kind of a funny looking uh, code of sorts. But yeah, people are joining, people are clicking on the thumbs up in the heart. That's fantastic. Letting me know that you're, you're making your way in. Can also do the more manual typing of www.minty with an i.com and then use that fun uh, eight digit code there. All right, lots of hearts coming in, loving it, loving it, loving it. Very good. I am going to have a, a few slides in here that are going to be interactive uh, to have you kind of tell me some, some thoughts and I'll prompt you with some questions and that's going to help our discussion. Now, if I do this well, uh, as intended, as designed, then I'm going to also start a timer and see how I do. So I should have, yep, there it is over there. Boom. And uh, I'm going to get through the taster part within this time frame or pretty close to it. Uh, as this timer goes off, I should be in kind of more of a little bit of an activity conversational thing that's going to segue us into really just an open question and answer time at the end. I hope to leave plenty of time because uh, I'm hoping you're going to have more questions and uh, want to hear more from me. All right, so I should be sharing out the screen. You should be uh, joined into Minty and we're gonna rock and roll this thing right on along to the next slide. So Scrum Mastery Pathway, it's based upon Jeff Watts' tremendously well done book. I, I just can never say enough about this, this book. It's in its second edition. It's a bestseller for sure. Hopefully all of you have a copy. Uh, if you don't and you're considering doing this pathway, you'll get a free cop copy you know, free as part of signing up. Right. Uh, but, uh, but yes, that's a, that's a perk. Uh, and it's about moving from good to great servant leadership. So while many of you here are part of scrum masters of the universe, because either you're practicing as a scrum master, you've been practicing a long time, you're interested in becoming a scrum master. Maybe you're moving out of some of the role. Uh, all of those things are great. You may be uh, doing something different, and you, but you're just here because this is such a great community and you you get all kinds of insights. That's awesome. So if you're all about servant leadership, whatever your role is, and even in your future, if you move out of Scrum Mastery into some something else, the information in this pathway that you're getting a taste of today, it's the kind of thing that will serve you well for a lifetime. It really, really will. Uh, so it's, you know, Initially in title, it's about scrum mastery, but it's really more so about servant leadership and deeper dives into uh, what that means. So we touch a bit on that, giving you another taste. Robert Greenleaf, um, 
he he's he's passed uh, gosh going back a good decade or longer maybe he's got a great essay out there if you haven't read it yet that's part of uh, kind of getting ready for this course that we re- recommend again it's not mandatory but we tell people go try to get that little booklet it's it's a quick read easy read what was that of, again it's uh, an an essay on uh, let me see i think it's called an essay on servant leadership Okay. So Rob, Robert K. Greenleaf, pretty easy to find out there on Amazon. But um, anyway, that's a bit of the the background to servant leadership. So Jeff incorporates a lot of that into his book as well as many other things. But what Jeff does in his book, if you're not yet familiar, he, Jeff Watts, he loves uh, acronyms, as do I. Uh, so uh, we're kindred spirits in that way, uh, love words, love being creative with them. So he uses retrained as an acronym so that these letters of retrained call your attention to these nine vital attributes that great servant leaders exude, exemplify. Can I think of one more E word I was trying to uh, (laughs) uh, engage with? There we go. I got a third one. Yay. That's always my goal. That's why I'm 3D change on my website. It's I always like to do things in threes. So it's quite quite a little challenge for me. Anyway, these words that you see scattered all about on this slide, respected, enabling, tactful, resourceful, alternative, inspiring, nurturing, empathic, and disruptive. These are the nine areas that we concentrate in. So we've, Jeff has built a curriculum. He's built uh, modules of concepts and activities and discussion and concrete practice around these attributes. Certainly these aren't exhaustive, uh, in the realm of servant leadership, the realm of what we do as agilists, uh, but they, they're a really, really solid foundation and a great place to, to start. If you don't have a mental model that helps you aspire to what you want to be as a servant leader, these words are a great starting point. So that's, again, a, a flavor of what the pathway is going to take you through. So as Jamie mentioned in the intro, Agile Mastery Institute, notice the three the three uh, pillars, if you will, at the bottom here, it's, it's taking classroom or workshop style instructor led, combining it with coaching and supporting you with coaching and in the cohort fashion, which a lot of other uh, sort of certification uh, offerings out there and other things uh, are going on are taking more advantage of this cohort experience. And it's really, really powerful. So Uh, It's another type of community of practice for you, but we try to build levels of intimacy and safety and these kinds of things uh, with your colleagues that are participating so that you can share. And hopefully you're, maybe some of you are in the same company, but maybe you're there with people in the cohort from other business verticals, other companies, other experiences. And that adds to the wealth of the sharing and the way that you learn from each other is a huge part of this overall experience. So AMI has set up this model to really, in a healthy way, using this disruptive concept to disrupt the certification industry, not to say everything about what it was up to this point was bad. That's not the point. It's just to say, we want to disrupt by bringing something fresh and something in that offers even more through the classroom plus coaching plus community experience. So that's an important part of the the vision. All right. So here's one of these interactive slides. I want to, it's not a word cloud. It's just kind of, it's going to let you put some open text. It should start to appear uh, pretty soon when I, when I click enter to show the answers, but I'm curious from all of you, you're here, you're interested, you want a taste of this. So you must be on a path towards agile mastery. That must mean something to you in your own way. So as that comes to mind, I want to know, what do you desire most in your journey? What are you looking for? What's that thing that's up to this point has been maybe elusive or just hasn't quite, haven't been able to get to it and you want to because you think it's vital to your mastery? Let me click enter and see what kind of results we got coming in. There we go. Have I, did I, there we go. Okay. I was like, did I move too fast and people aren't keeping up in the slides? All right. We got some answers. Thank you. Leading others without authority. Helping others to be their best. 
a measurement for success. Fantastic. More collaborative, high-performing teams. That's what you desire that most. Okay. Helping team with buy-in. Being inspiring. By the way, I'm just noticing this is so cool. Why can't I get your name to show up? Uh, where did it go? Someone has the coolest little plug-in type technology where you, you look like this really cool animated avatar that's moving. Like I imagine it's your camera's following you. That is so cool. It's like a cartoon version of yourself. I love it. Can't see your name, but that is so. Cool. It's a new zoom upgrade. <laughs> is it really? That's super neat. I've got to play with that somewhere. Yeah, Teresa. Okay, yeah. there you go. That is so cool. All right. I got distracted by that really cool thing. I'm like, I was going to be the agile squirrel before I discovered quakas, but uh, Diane Zajac out there has a already claimed agile squirrel. So I was like, ah, cause I'm like from Doug, Doug, the dog, you know, like squirrel. Like I just, I love to be distracted by fun things. All right. Good stuff. Yeah. Thanks. All right. We're getting a lot of good stuff here. Helping people achieve their goals, exceed their goals. That's fantastic. Yeah. More about the happy and empowered teams and obtaining a new role making a difference, helping people get to the next level. This is great. Watching others succeed using Agile with your help. And a couple of you with the influencing without authority. So you've got a sense of, of that huge challenge that we have as servant leaders, as scrum masters. This is great. All right. Thank you. I really wanted to uh, see where a lot of you were at with this kind of thinking and engagement. I'll tell you more about how, so I'm giving you a taste. So I'm, Jamie can tell you, um, I'm very meta. Uh, if you know what I mean, it's like, I I'm always sort of doing things with intention and kind of with this undertone or underlying sort of, uh, method to the madness kind of thing. Uh, and I'm trying to role model stuff and I don't always draw attention directly to it. Although because this is a taster, I'm drawing your attention to it, but what I just did a moment ago by asking you that question, some of you may know, is I started to connect you just more with today's topic and talk. Um, and so I'm wondering if my slides got a little out of whack, but not, I guess they did. That's okay. We'll adapt. Um, so I'll come back to that point in just a minute, but thank you for the answers of what you're looking for in your agile mastery journey. So Jeff Watts, he's had a sense of those things from people uh, for quite a while, as you imagine, he's been in the industry, uh, so to speak for a long time as a, as a certified scrum trainer and an amazing coach. He's just has a wealth in um, the psychological aspects of, of the challenges of what we do as agilists. So uh, anyway, he has brought this, into his own version of offering these things uh, through his Agile Mastery Institute. And he wanted to find a way to, if you will, scale himself if he could. Um, and so he thought, let me set up a way to train other people to teach my content, my curriculum, but with their own style and their own way. And they'll function like guides or like Sherpas, you know, more than just trainers who speak to slides and these kinds of things, but, you know, really create a rich experience. So it's a great vision. And so there's an example of Jeff with some of his stuff in person. So there in the UK and parts of Europe, South Africa, Singapore. Oh, look how I capitalized the I there. That's cute. Singapore. Um, so they're doing a lot of these in, in person. I wanted to draw your attention to that because it says possibly in the USA, maybe, maybe in the fall, we'll have a way to offer some of these. Um, but I'm the first guide licensed through Agile Mastery Institute here in the United States or in North North America. Uh, so at the moment, just getting started, we have only launched these uh, in a small way, virtually. So, uh, but if if you've got a passport, you want to travel, uh, you're interested, you can go to the Agile Mastery Institute site and you can find some offerings and go to some cool places and participate uh, live and in person with some people if you want. Uh, but virtually here, I'm offering this and other people that are coming up through the ranks like Jamie and others are um, hoping to become licensed guides and we'll continue to offer it here in North America, friendly time zones and these kinds of things. Uh, so for now, we do this virtually. 
Okay. And there are some other worldwide offerings that are also being done virtually. So we give a, we give, you know, both flavors, if you will. Anybody out there familiar with training from the back of the room? It's another great uh, way of getting uh, some in-depth insights into becoming a better trainer. So you as scrum masters, right? That's one of the hats you often wear. You're given new teams. You're given people that in a company where they were told, Hey, um, we, you know, scrum is new to these people, uh, teach them all about it. And so you get to be a teacher and a trainer. Uh, so if you don't come from an education background, uh, if, if that's just not a natural thing for you, training from the back, back of the room is a fantastic resource to get you started. And, um, in there, they use a four C learning model, um, by the way, if you search in Google for C's, you'll actually get some other interesting stuff related to marketing. And there's another aspect to learning that's out there uh, that's, that's useful and good. Um, so I just want to acknowledge that. If you happen to go searching, you're like, wait, that's a different 4C from what Jeff uh, was showing. Yes, that's true. There is a different one. All right. My bullets should appear. No, they're not appearing. Let me go back. All right. Let me try this other thing that's supposed to work. Dun, dun, dun. Minty. There we go. Okay. The first C connection. So that's what I did a moment ago that I was talking about kind of meta things with intent. When I asked you that question, you started to fill in the open text. I was connecting you to our topic. And so that's, that's the structure that we do. We start off, we get you connected uh, to those attributes and to some of the, the deeper uh, concepts that we're about to introduce. And that's the second C concept or concepts. And then there we go. The next two concrete practice. So we give you some time to actually, we maybe send you into some breakout rooms and groups and you get to practice together, uh, prompting each other with questions or maybe practicing some uh, uh, role play kind of conversations with maybe like some coaching or nonviolent communication or these kinds of things, active listening. These, these are things built into it. <clears throat> and then of course we, wrap it up with a time of conclusion where we reflect on everything that you just learned and discussed. And we try to make sure that it activated some, some patterns, some identification of patterns, some new thoughts, and that it's even got you with that sense of encouragement and internal uh, intrinsic motivation rather that you want to, you want to go and do something new and different in the workplace, like, like that day or the next day. And so we want you to write that down um, and reflect on that because those actions do more of those cool chemical things that we do inside of our brains and our bodies that, that further propel us in actually making that thing happen. You know, so it gets, it helps us shift from that sitting on the couch kind of state of, yeah, I should really get outside and exercise to like, no, you've written down, you've kind of made a plan, you've set out your shoes, you've kind of, you've, you've taken some small steps that actually got you outside and got you in the process of exercising or practicing. All right. So that's a bit of the kind of the general structure of how each module goes and roughly for about an hour, some are a little longer perhaps, but we build in breaks and, um, and these kinds of things. Now, um, zooming out, that, that was kind of in the experience in the moment, like in one of those, one of those attribute modules, for example, we were kind of more granular in that for just a moment ago, but now I've kind of zoomed out and let's just talk about this whole pathway thing, kind of this commitment. We were talking about commitments a minute ago. You hear six month cohort and maybe a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, six months, that feels like I'm going, you know, to maybe like to night school or, you know, it, it probably gives you visions of this massive, hard to manage commitment. If it gave you those visions and thoughts, I'm hoping to alleviate those, those thoughts or concerns. Uh, it's really not, not uh, the kind of investment that's really super burdensome. We tried to make it as manageable as possible in your life. So the first workshop is two days. So 16 hours. Uh, two full days. Sometimes we reorganize those for people and do them maybe as four half days. You know, we're adaptable there at times um, if we get enough requests for that. Now you see that we start off with one of those and then we end with one six months down the road, so to speak, down the pathway. There's the adventurer workshop. So you see those two green things there. 
uh, giving you a sense of the bookends of the beginning and the, I won't say the ending of the experience, but I'll just say the commencement, like uh, graduation from uh, school. It's, it's, it's still just more of your ongoing journey. In the middle, sandwiched into all that are a bunch of navigator sessions. We, we could do them in blocks of three hours, or we can even break those apart into maybe like one, one and a half hour or 90 minute segments and do a few more of them. But the idea is uh, we have those and supplement it with some coaching, one-on-one, -on one-to-one coaching sessions. So myself as a guide, I take a coaching stance and I get with you as a participant and we spend an hour and, and we uh, using the coaching art conversation, if you're familiar with that, uh, just guide you through whatever you, whatever is on your mind. What, what do you want to happen? Um, and we let you figure that out for yourself and find your own path to what you want to do, what your options are, what actions you're willing to take. I'm just prompting you as a, as a coach with questions that are open-ended and hopefully neutral enough, uh, that you set your own pace, your agenda, and your, um, unlocking, you know, all the potential within yourself. All right. So I hope that helps kind of get more of a full timeline sense of this. It's about 48 hours total that, that you've ended up spending. There's flexibility in there. Um, thinking of some of your questions, let's say like one of those months you're, you're enjoying PTO on vacation with your family. Cause it's over the summer or spring or whatever. Um, there's flexibility. We, we record the sessions. We try to make that so that you can go back and watch and kind of catch up. Um, but what we try to say is just, you know, as long as in those sessions, your attendance, your total live attendance is roughly like 80, say around 80% or something like that, that you've been there with your cohort colleagues, then that's great. Um, cause that's vital to the experience, people being there and interacting and these kinds of things. Um, but again, we try to make all that work as best as we can. And like I said, provide recordings or ways to sort of catch up, see what you missed. We try to capture things um, in, in tooling and such that also makes that uh, possible for you to keep benefiting. So the tooling. So Miro, Mural, depending on the, the guide, the, the person teaching, um, you know, some of us have Miro licenses, some of us have Mural licenses. Uh, you can see I'm using Mentimeter today. Uh, Mighty Networks is a platform where we try to, we set up like a chat channel and a, and a place where we can condense and consolidate a lot of our uh, course materials and things and make it available or where all the links are to the different things. And it's a way for you and your, your colleagues to continue to interact inside of Mighty Networks. So there's, of course, a virtual meeting like we're in here with Zoom or something like that. Some people are experimenting with new technology, something out there called Butter uh, that, um, um, uh, Chris Stone, he was here uh, in, for Scrum Masters of the Universe not too long ago. Uh, Chris is experimenting with some cool stuff. Uh, we've tried Gather or Gather.town, if anybody's played around with that. We've done a few things there. Um, sometimes that doesn't work so well for like uh, when you're in a corporate, kind of behind a corporate firewall and such, it, it can be challenging. So yeah, lots of cool stuff there using timers, breakout rooms, quizzes, and polling, the chats, all of these things are part of the experience. So I'm giving you a taste of the experience. So those are the things you can expect to be interacting with and doing uh, within the, the class and so forth. All right. So I think I'm doing okay on time because this is where, as I was hoping it would wind down, I'd be getting into this part. So the retrained ac acronym, I introduced that earlier. I've tried to draw your attention with the arrow and the change in the, the coloring here to the enabling module. So I'm now going to go, let's say we were looking at that charcuterie board of all these words here and, and the pathway and, and such. And we had all these, you know, some, there were some chocolates or some meats and cheeses and other things. So, you know, I'm going to just, it's like, we're picking, picking one of those. We want to kind of go and taste. So we're going to taste enabling from the charcuterie board of these uh, attributes here. Definitely getting hungrier. I can't wait to eat lunch after this. <laughs> Hang in there if you're like me. We're almost there. All right. So connecting you again to the enabling topic, using that four C's model again here with you a little bit, giving you a flavor for that. If you're in Minty, I know some of you have just been joining, but hopefully you can get into the Minty using the link. And tell me, please, what is one thing you normally always do for your team 
Is there a thing? What's that thing you seem to always do for your team? Got some answers coming in. I'll reveal them in a minute. Give you all a few minutes to get your answers in. And if you're not currently in a team where it's easy to answer, you know, go back to, back in time when you were with the team and there was like always that thing that you always did for the team. Only two answers. There we go. Some more answers coming in. Six. All right. Now we're doing good. I'm going to start to reveal these answers. What do we got? Oh, yeah. Schedule those ceremonies. You're the team secretary. Yeah, reminders. The, team, the team's uh, <laughs> uh, bo uh, reminder board or something. Be there for them. Well, okay. I like, yeah. I see what you mean there. That's, that's important. Yeah, you are always doing the retrospectives, okay? Offer workshops on story points and estimation. Help them. Yep, that's like being there for them. I, I like that. Uh, constantly show progress in the retrospective areas of improvement. Cool. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Shut up most of the time. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, we definitely explore that uh, in the explore in the explorers workshop. Not to sound so redundant, but uh, we talk about silence. We talk about listening. Metrics. You're always doing the metrics somehow for them. Cool. Anything else? Uh, nine of you here. I think last time we got up to about 11 answers. So there we go. A couple more coming in. Oh, you're always modeling values. I See, that's really cool. Love it. All right. Check my, um, got a few different things going on. Good. All right, so I'm going to stop that timer so it kind of goes away because I'm, I'm well within where I want it to be with my timing. So this is perfect. Good. Okay. Well, like I said, I was connecting you to the topic. Um, so there's a, a variety of, of really interesting things here in your answers. Love, love the participation. Thank you for that. All right. So that's that's a taste of what we do. We get you connected to the topic, prompt you with a question. Um, now, what we might do is actually set up a bit more of like maybe a breakout where you and one other person or you and a, a couple other people in a small group will set you up with an activity. So you'll answer the question, but we may prompt you with a few follow-up questions um, and let you kind of continue to talk about it. Uh, so it might've been there that we would have said, what's something you always do for the team? And is this something that uh, further empowers the team, or is it something that causes them to depend upon you all the time? Something like that, right? So <clears throat> then we take you into a good to great statement. So uh, Jeff Watts, if you don't know, he also borrowed from uh, Jim Collins. Jim Collins wrote a book uh, that's quite well known out here in the business world uh, called From Good to Great, an uh, excellent book. And so uh, Jeff borrows from, from that good to great concept and uses it himself and gives you a lot of these statements. A good scrum master is wary of influencing the team. A great scrum master can act normally and know the team will still make their own decisions. So Jeff has, you know, he's chosen these words very carefully. We'll introduce this. We'll give you some time. You know, I, I would be a lot more quiet probably after having read it, give you some more time to reflect, maybe poll, check in. How's this resonating? Have a short little discussion or something. And then I'll say, look, this is a reminder. We're not saying that the good part of this is something that is somehow what you don't want to be and you're trying to move away from it. That's not, that's not the point. It's to say, you may find yourself functioning with that mentality right now, and that's good. That's fine. And there's nothing wrong with it. But can you build upon it and maybe adjust and adapt yourself with your team over time to move more into the statement of greatness. Because when you're wary, then you're, you know, you're either holding back or you're doing something in such a way that maybe you're not fully yourself in that regard. You're kind of pulling your punches or whatever. Uh, so we're trying to say you want to get to a place where you're just completely 
able to be who you are because you have full confidence that the team knows how to do what they need to on their own um, so that you're not wary of nudging them in quote unquote the uh, a way that's that's going to make them dependent on you all right so this is the kind of thing where we set it up so i gave you a lot of a lot of flavor for how that gets us going we might define the word a bit more and kind of look at the positive and negative aspects of of how enabling is defined maybe even have you share uh, you know some of us have personal experiences where uh, we've seen uh, family members, friends, uh, colleagues in the workplace or other uh, situations where people have um, had their kind of uh, bad behaviors, we'll say, or unhealthy behaviors have have, have persisted and people around them seem to enable it rather than to uh, show the, the tough love and these kinds of things. So we'll talk about that, further connect to it, get more of the concept in mind. Uh, there's a white knight chess piece there. So we do we do a bit with images like that. And we talk about, do, now we try to get into the depth of the concept a bit more, moving towards concrete practice. What's it like for you? Here's some self-awareness that we move into. Um, do, do you know if you're kind of the hero that comes to the rescue of others? Because that can really do some stimulating stuff for us to make us feel good. Um, and, and we can do that without even realizing that's why we're doing it. So we try to use these pathways to challenge you and see if we can uh, open up your eyes if you have some blind, spot, blind spots and let you ask yourself these hard questions. Now, we don't put you on the spot. We're not trying to put you in something so uncomfortable that you feel unsafe, but we are trying to give you a safe place uh, to go through self-discovery. So we talk about this white knight complex, this... Um, cognitive bias of sorts, this complex that people have of kind of being the hero, the savior. And we'll spend some more time uh, perhaps watching a video um, or talking about some examples, these kinds of things. And where we're trying to go is, hey, when you're, if you're acting that way or have acted that way in the past, did you, did you recognize that you're actually being an impediment to people becoming empowered on their own or enabled of their own uh, volition and and capability to do things they ought to be able to do. So we challenge ourselves with that kind of a question. Are you the impediment to the team because you always update the JIRA or, um, you know, handle the metrics or um, yeah, even you're always uh, scheduling and doing all the things, right? And what would it be like? So that's, we open it up. What would it be like for you to change some things like that? Can you imagine changing some of your behaviors so that it improves the behaviors of the team to handle their impediments or something else more effectively? Okay, so that's a, a, a big taste of what that's like. But, you know, we, we also kind of say, we might throw in a quote or something, you know, kind of pithy and fun and good old Ken Schwaber. And actually, Jamie helped me. Um, the The origins of this actually go back to there's a kind of a, it's not quite the authentic quote here, but uh, but the concept is a dead scrum master is a useless scrum master. But for those of you that know Ken's um, original work, he he phrased it a little differently about a a, a sheep dog, I think. Um, but here we may can you imagine what we would discuss? A dead scrum master. Anybody want to throw a word out, a word or two? Come off mute. Let me hear your voices out there. Thinking about enabling in good ways and, and not so great ways. How could you end up being the dead scrum master if you're not applying your enabling in the best ways? Thoughts? Everybody's shy. If you tried to talk and I didn't hear you, then maybe you're double muted. Oh, sorry, what's that question again? What's the question again? Just the, uh, this quote. What What do you think and relates to this quote from this topic of it enabling? Uh, disengaged. Okay. Yeah. Who Who would be disengaged? Well, either the scrum master or the team, or both. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> lack of engagement. You might as well be, yeah. Like a, it's like zombie scrum or, you know, it's kind of like walking the walking dead. <laughs> I think I, I heard think, somebody else breaking in. Yes. Hi Jeff. It's Elena. Elena. Hello. <laughs> um, I think what comes up to me is uh, putting the mask on yourself first. It's sustainability just in general is one of the jail pr uh, principles, right? Right. Well, you cannot do good if, if you don't have it, if you don't have your cup filled or a bucket filled, right? That's so true. <laughs> Jamie wrote oh. you first. Excellent, Elena. I'm so glad to see you and hear from you. And that's you. There's so many great answers here, but that's that's among the just fantastic answers. Yeah, it's that sustainability. So, are you coming to the rescue? Or are you doing so many things in such a way that it's it's really not no longer good for you, no longer healthy or, or somehow unsustainable? Or are you, are you on a direction like that? So yeah, Elena brought out uh, even more, but, um, but the comment prior to that as well. Yeah. Um, you can affect the engagement and create disengagement depending on what you're doing or not doing. Good. I, so that's kind of what we do. We try to get some <laughs> stimulated conversation. I, somebody else out there, would you have? No, I mean, if you're changing topics, it's cool, but I just want to kind of come in a little bit counter counter grain a little bit um oh yeah go uh, yeah. i was i was in um in a pi planning about a week ago and um the organizers you know for uh, our uh, art basically had invited uh, a speaker who's uh, I, I forgot the name is like uh, from germany i believe and made a comment that basically in his announcement with the agile delivery and and folks in delivery and stuff like that, where he questioned the value currently of scrum masters and coaches. Hmm. Um, so the way I'm going with this is like, are we getting to a point where are we even fully understanding what the role of scrum master has evolved to become from what it was? If you look at Schwaber, for example, his initial definition of the role and how it changed over time is like, hmm. Uh, are we getting to a point where we're diluting the role so much that the perception is becoming now, do we really need these folks because the emphasis is shifting in a different direction? I, I don't mean to scare people. I just want to say, especially with the amount of uh, monetizing we go around the certifications and training and what have you, <clears throat> is that yeah. uh, it, the perception is basically going out there and I've seen it multiple places. Um, just your yeah. thought. Oh, great comments and thoughts. And uh, will I be saying your name correctly if I say uh, Kamel? Yes, Kamel? correct. Yeah, Kamel. Kamel. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you, Kamel. Um, wow, really, really good stuff there. I would, my, my very quick, because I know we're limited on time, kind of response to consider there is a couple of things. So you're exactly right. There are shifting perceptions and uninformed or misinformed perceptions around our roles as servant leaders, whether it's scrum master, agile coach, these kinds of things. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that, right? Um, uh, Anti-patterns that have, that have happened and, and all these other things. So, uh, so those people that make those judgments that we would sort of perceive as, as, or their perceptions we interpret as, um, maybe frustrating to us of like, oh, you're, why are you questioning the value? Uh, these kinds of things. Uh, yeah, that can, that can be rough um, and, and create some friction and irritation. So how do we respond? Um, my response lately to that has, has been to try to have a conversation and say, you know, um, how valuable is coherence in the organization and in the teams? Um, you know, I, I hear leaders and people talking alignment. We don't have to agree, but we have to align these kinds of things. Okay. But why, why does it seem that there's a struggle for that to happen? Perhaps there's a lack of coherence. You know, there's other, there's dissonance and other things in the system. So, um, so without coaches, without scrum masters, I, I argue that um, you've taken away your, your key people that can bring about that coherence uh, more quickly, we'll say. I don't want to say faster necessarily, but more effectively. At least that's what we ought to be doing, in my opinion. So the sooner we get to, uh, you know, maybe this is overused, but shared understanding, but like really, truly 
helping people visualize the things they're talking about instead of just talking words, but like really creating, whether it's value stream maps or other kinds of mental models and these kinds of things. Um, this is where we help the coherence building that's so vital. Uh, I'm the only one lost to him. Yeah, I can't hear him. He froze. Yeah, it looks like maybe you lost his connection. I see tons of value there, but um, but oh. you're right. Even there, oh. people still okay. don't relate to value. I heard some words. You Sorry. froze a little bit there. Oh, I froze. Yeah, I just see that your internet connection is unstable. It was very profound what I said. I'm sorry you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I, uh, I'm not sure what where I froze and how, how long. Hard for me to recover when I don't know how much I was heard or not heard. Am I still frozen? Oh, no, no, it was just a little bit, a couple seconds right before you. Okay. You okay. Okay. Well, I hope I, enough of my answer um, was was helpful. Uh, but yeah, uh, Kamel, thank you. you. You're right. And it's a challenge. I only offered a little bit of my insight around it. Um, there's certainly more. But we do, uh, we have our work cut out for us to show the ways that we bring value, um, whether it's around coherence and other kinds of things, um, better facilitation, more effective meetings. You know, my goal has been to try to to show ways that we can uh, make meetings more effective, you know, save time in them earlier because we got to the outcome faster, more effectively, these kinds of things. If we could nudge some of that just a little bit, it's not too hard to do the math. Imagine, you know, reducing one meeting a day for say a thousand people. Um, if you could eventually, you know, create something that's that impactful, uh, you know, I think that numbers, the numbers there could probably be pretty impressive or interesting. That's but one idea, you know, but these are the things we're out there to be the creative idea people as well. And to bring that better engagement into the workplace. So, um, yeah, that's what we do. We have uh, these concrete, these discussions, we try to concretely practice with some of what we uh, introduced and then we reflect on it. And so, um, I, I provide my folks a journal kind of like this one here. Well, it's exactly like that. Um, and uh, encourage everybody to do some writing in their journal, ask them a few question prompts. If I can get my, there we go. Like what patterns have you identified uh, that leads to wrong sort of enablement in your team? Make a note of it. Uh, if, I've, if I've brought that to light, now you can consider it. And what habit would you bring in that might increase positive enablement in your team? So if I'm able as a guide to activate this for you, Oh, there. Yes. yes. Jamie's holding hers up. Yeah. Then uh, hopefully I'm role modeling what you can then start doing more of within your team. And back to our value question a moment ago. Um, if you're helping your team be more reflective and think better about their work and make changes that they can also show their improvements of how they shifted from good to great as a team in quality and delivery and these kinds of things, uh, there's your, when your people say, what are the value the Scrum Masters bring? There it is. Let me tell you, let me tell you this story. So we try to give you time to tell your stories and become better storytellers together. Uh, we use those navigator sessions, for example, to dive deeper into those concepts. Um, we give you the space to say, you know, I'm, I'm not a great storyteller. Um, I want to get better at this. Cool. Here's your container in the navigator sessions with your, your colleagues uh, in the cohort and with me or uh, another guide. And through Jeff Watts and his massive network, we offer to bring in, uh, if you want to bring in somebody, we'll reach out to them and, and try to bring them in and feature them as a, a guest person with you and your cohort for a little while. And you kind of get a special um, masterclass, if you will, with somebody. So that's a taster of what this pathway experience is intended to be, a little bit of what it's like. Um, I hope that was enough that uh, to whet your appetite or to to really get you excited and leave your sort of uh, agile mouth watering for more of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So let me um, find out if if you've been using the question uh, feature along the way. I'll try to see if anybody did. I don't think I have any questions showing up, but um, come off mute, type in a question, throw it into the chat. Don't be shy. Yeah. 
Any questions for me? How can I help you? So Jeff, do you, are there any prerequisites to the class? Do you have to have some practical experience before joining? Thank you, Mark. Good question. Um, just a sufficient working knowledge of, of Scrum. Um, we're, we don't spend time going over like the Scrum foundations or basics or the roles per se. We expect people to know, to know that to a degree that when we are making references to Scrum uh, events, or to the relationships between Scrum Master product owner and, and team members or stakeholders. Quiet group. Who else? Other questions? Feedback? When is the next cohort starting? Aha. Let's see. Let's go to my site, uh, 3D change or 3D change.com. Uh, and so you can come out here, click all around the place. But uh, if you happen to start with services, then we've got the pathways listed here. And uh, you can learn more. You can, you can see a bit more about it. Uh, you earn some badges along the way. I, I didn't tell you that, but that's a lot of fun. These are uh, accredited uh, through a certifier uh, group and through Agile Mastery Institute. You get these awesome badges and certifications you can add to your profile and all that good stuff. Um, but we know that people doing this aren't doing it really for a cert or badge or letters. It's more about the experience and, and the depth of learning. Uh, and to getting to Jamie's question, if you scroll down there, you see all the things you get uh, being a part of this. There's a there's also a smartphone app uh, that you get access to. You get access to Jeff's uh, e-course, that version. And then uh, you can click on register or enroll. This takes you to the products page. Uh, and you can kind of see we've got a product mastery cohort scheduled to start up in May. We've got a scrum mastery one. Oh, they got a little jumbled, didn't they? But here, we've got one coming up in May. Uh, let's see, May 15th and 16th is the very next Scrum Mastery one. And then there's also one set up for June, if I can back up. And don't forget that you get a uh, SMO2 discount if you put in the code SMO2 when you're... That's right. To $425, yeah. which is amazing for 48 hours experience. Yeah. So June, June 8th and 9th is another one. So the two Scrum Mastery ones, we got one in mid-May starting on the 15th and one starting in early June on the 8th. And if you're trying to get your product owner, product manager folks uh, involved, uh, we've also got product mastery courses for them. That follows a different acronym of attributes for the products, product uh, owner, product leader people, uh, but they can sign up as well. Got one May, May 22nd, May 23rd coming up for them but basically the same kind of model or flow that I was trying to give you a taste of today. So do you lead the product mastery one also, Jeff? I do. Cool. I do indeed. Yeah. That was fun. All right. Well, I think we are about at time. Yeah. So thanks for having me, everybody. This I just great. want to say thanks for, thanks for sharing with us, Jeff, about this. This is awesome. Really appreciate it. And, um, and um, hopefully, hopefully some of you will sign up. And uh, um, I know for me, it's been a great experience so far. So I can attest to that. No, um, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, so everyone have a great rest of your day and an even better weekend. Yes. Thanks for Go joining enjoy and Enjoy some good lunch food if you're hungry like me. See you next <laughs> time, everybody. Thanks, Scrum Masters yep. of the Universe. Thank Thanks a lot, Jeff. This was great. <laughs> My pleasure. Yeah, thanks Thank everyone. You, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Bye. You're welcome. Good to see 